Hi guys. It is turning into a pleasant evening here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. The heat seems to have broken a little bit here at Bugs in a Jar Farm outside of Ithaca, New York here on this lovely Wednesday, August 12th, 2020. And uh, a little dog and I, oh yes, I am Sam Mitchell. And this is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza, and this is Collapse Chronicles. Just wanted to, I'm just going through the, the mainstream media news here at uh, the end of this busy day on the farm. And uh, just gonna, I'm going to share, I'm just going to pick out two stories to share with you. We're going to check in with our two favorite planet eaters we love to hate. That would be Donald Trump and Jair Bozo Nero. So uh, what is going on with uh, with Donald Trump uh, this week as he gets closer and closer to what I hope is the end of his one-term presidency and of course uh, getting closer and closer to civil this civil the new civil war brewing in America. I, I did think uh, it was a brilliant idea for Donald Trump to uh, make some uh, speech from the Gettysburg battlefield. I, I cannot think of a, a more uh, auspicious place for Donald Trump to like what's what's he doing accepting the Republican nomination at uh, the site of one of the bloodiest battles of the Civil War to set the stage for what's coming but we're not talking about Gettysburg we're gonna go up there to Alaska this is actually a, an editorial piece in the LA Times by Tim Palmer and Char Miller who are some sort of fish huggers. Okay, take it away. <clears throat> the Trump administration push, pushes Bristol Bay closer to disaster. Think elk by the thousands grazing the grasslands of California's Central Valley before the gold rush. Think 60 million buffalo thundering across the Great Plains. Think of the Columbia River where 16 million salmon fend their way upstream to spawn, now reduced to imperiled species. Such visions of unmarred past abundance provide a clue to the richness remaining at Bristol Bay, Alaska, where not 16 million but as many as 60 million salmon still return from ocean depths to wilderness rivers. The fish nourish orcas, bears, the livelihoods and culture of Alaska's native people, and a commercial fishing industry that delivers 46% of the sockeye salmon marketed worldwide. The fishery generates one and a half billion dollars in annual income and 14,500 jobs. A gift of the wild waters and mountains of southwest Alaska that could last forever, could last forever if only we would let the place be. Good luck. But, <clears throat> Bristol Bay's salmon are threatened by a Canadian corporation that proposes to excavate a massive open pit mine to exploit and export American minerals, primarily copper and gold. Northern Dynasty Mineral Limited's Pebble Mine advanced in the permitting process on July 24th when the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers released a final, a final environmental impact statement on the project. Contrary to most assessments of Pebble Mine, 
The Trump administration's Army Corps concluded that the project would, quote, not be expected to have a measurable effect, close quote, on the salmon or the fishing industry. Final approval from Washington awaits, if it happens, meaning when it happens, between now and November 3rd, it would reverse previous federal decisions based on years of analysis. Dynasties mine an excavation the size of 460 football fields would affect hundreds of miles of streams and its pipeline 188 miles long with 82 miles of road would lie squarely between two of our most extraordinary national parks and preserves, Lake Clark and Katmai. Each part of this proposal seems worse than the last. Consider the earthen dams up to six stories high intended to contain runoff from toxic tailings of acids and heavy metals, keeping it from the pristine watershed of Bristol Bay forever. Yeah, right. Such containment is at best compromised in a region where it rains 50 inches a year and southwest Alaska is one of the most seismically active zones on the planet. To understand the potential catastrophe for the greatest run of salmon left on Earth, look no further than another Canadian mining company's tailings dam disaster in 2014 at Mount Polly, British Columbia. 24 million cubic meters of mine waste roared down Hazeltine Creek into Questnell Lake, devastating each. You can see the resulting cataclysm on video. Although the long-term consequences of that disaster remain unclear, that uncertainty is precisely why so many oppose Pebble Mine. After all, Dynasty says Pebble Mine will be safe, but that is what the Mount Polly mine owner said too. Yes. Uh, not incidentally, Imperial Metals, owner of the Mount Polly mine, th th this just gets uh, thicker and, and thicker, suspended that mine's operations in January last year due to declining copper prices. Yet one more reason to reject the assertion that Pebble Mine is an economic necessity. Perhaps recognizing a loser when they see one, four other mining giants, including Mitsubishi and Rio Tinto, have backed out of the Pebble Mine project over the years, leaving questions of capability and liability with the smaller, less well-capitalized Northern Dynasty firm. The Federal Environmental Protection Agent agency at first rejected the project, finding in 2014 that, quote, mining the pebble deposit would cause irreversible damage to one of the world's last intact salmon ecosystems, close quote, and recommended restrictions on development in Bristol Bay. But the mine was resurrected by Trump's first and disgraced EPA Director Scott Pruitt in 2017, and the agency's proposed safeguards were officially dropped earlier this year. Now the Army Corps' environmental impact statement is criticized as egregiously flawed. Surveys show that a strong majority of Alaskans oppose the mine, though its sponsors have predicted predictably garnered support of state officials. Native Alaskans oppose the use of their land for the road and pipeline. 
Bristol Bay's largest landowner, Bristol Bay Native Corporation, whose shareholders are the area's native people is unequivocal in its objections to the Army Corps' environmental impact statement. Quote, it does not and cannot support the conclusion that the proposed pebble mine in Bristol Bay salmon can coexist, close quote. Uh, Alaska Natives have been joined by commercial fishermen and a coalition of conservation organizations that vow to appeal the federal permits. As chair of the House Committee with oversight of the Army Corps and the Clean Water Act, Representative Peter DeFazio of Oregon favors protection, saying, quote, there is no way to compensate for the loss of one of the last pristine wild salmon runs in the world and for the destruction of land that many Alaska Native nations have called their home for millennia. We cannot get this wrong, close quote. Yes, we shall see. If the Army Corps and EPA do get it wrong and approval is granted for the Pebble Mine this fall, Protection would then depend on a Joe Biden presidency to reset federal policy away from foreign profits and toward fishery conservation and the view of a majority of Alaskans. The re-election of Donald Trump, conversely, would assure an extended conflict with the clear risk of ripping apart not only Bristol Bay, but Alaska's social fabric as well. The aftermath could handicap generations to come. The state of Alaska is far beyond the horizon for most Americans. Few of us will ever see the wonders of Bristol Bay and its wild headwaters nourishing the world's most prolific, prolific runs of salmon but if they are lost, we will have failed to protect what truly makes America great. Yes, who are these people? Um, anyway, as I said, a couple of salmon huggers. So, you know, Donald Trump, right up to his last day, from his first day, to his last, but uh, as long as we're talking about planet eaters, we all love to hate what is going on with uh, Donald's bromance partner, Jair Bozonero, uh, the Brazilian Donald Trump. Amazon fires a quote lie, huh? Says Brazil's Bozonero. Yes. Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro has said it is a, quote, lie that fires are ravaging the Amazon rainforest, despite data from his own government showing the number of blazes is rising. The far-right leader has faced international condemnation for presiding over huge fires and rising deforestation in the Amazon. Criticism he took issue with in a speech to a video conference of countries that share the world's biggest rainforest. This is Jair Bozonero. Tropical rainforest doesn't catch fire. So this story that the Amazon is burning is a lie. And we have to fight it with real numbers. Hmm, he said yesterday. Yet Satellite data from Brazil's own National Space Agency show the number of forest fires in the Brazilian Amazon last month rose 28% from July 2019 to 6,803, you know, recorded fires in one month. 
experts say the fires are typically not sparked naturally, but set by humans to clear land illegally for farming and ranching. Last year, huge fires devastated the Amazon from May to October, sending a thick haze of black smoke all the way to Sao Paulo. The fires triggered worldwide alarm over a forest seen as vital to curbing climate change. Experts warn this year's dry season, which is just now getting started, could see even more fires. The scrutiny is pressuring Bozo Nero, who has called for protected Amazon lands to be opened up to mining and agriculture. He has deployed the army to the Amazon basin, 60% of which is in Brazil, to fight fires and deforestation. He has declared a ban on agricultural fires and has launched a task force to combat the problem. He said that was producing results, pointing to a more than 25% reduction in deforestation year on year last month. And uh, I'm not gonna get off into a whole uh, rant about this, uh, that deforestation was the actual felling of the trees was lower uh, was lower in July of 2020 than it was in July of 2019, although he failed to mention that the rate in 2019 was how many times bigger than the rate before he took, uh, you follow what I'm saying. Quote, we are making big, enormous efforts to fight fires and deforestation. But even so, we are criticized. Yes, he told the meeting of a group launched last year to protect the Amazon. His government has been accused of cherry picking data by trumpeting the, I love that word, trumpeting the July drop in deforestation. Despite the one month decline, assuming you believe that BS for one minute, Despite the alleged one-month decline, deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon set a new record high in the first seven months of this year taken together, according to Brazil's own data. And there you go. So it's business as usual from Bristol Bay, Alaska to the Amazon rainforest. And I could go on and on with this, guys. And I probably will. But uh, it's time for the little dog to eat some dinner. Uh, get out there and enjoy it while you still can. Bye, guys.